Well now, this is Monday, the 6th of September. September? Where's the year gone? I still feel like just getting over Christmas and it's September. How about Monday, the 6th of September? Here's a verse of scripture. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. We have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. We have fled for refuge. That's one Greek verb. To flee for refuge. Catafugo is the Greek verb and here it's in what is called a participle form and it, I think I'm right in saying you must excuse me I'm, I'm not very knowledgeable on these things that the participle turns the verb into a noun more or less so what we could read, I think with perfect accuracy, we are refugees to lay hold of the hope set before us. Refugees. Does that ring a bell? Well, surely, surely it does. Oh, no television screens over these last recent days and weeks. We've all seen the most extraordinary scenes of refugees and we have been astounded at what we have seen. There are two sorts of refugee. There's the refugee who wants to get out. And there's the refugee who wants to get in. But the common denominator among all refugees is urgency. They want to get out now. They want to get in now. Urgency. Urgency is a feature of being a refugee. And urgency dominates the refugee's thinking. Urgency is implanted in every word that the refugee speaks. Urgency is written on every face and is identified in every thought. We have seen refugees so urgent that they have run alongside an aeroplane as it taxis to the runway to take off. And some of them, for urgency, were clinging to that aeroplane. Only a few seconds later, alas, to fall to their deaths from the sky. And we have seen on our television screens unseaworthy boats packed with refugees who will dare anything not to get away but to get in and to reach 
a place of safety, refugees. You must agree with me. It is a horrible necessity to be a refugee, to inhabit the category of refugee is a horrible thing. There's no other status for a refugee while he is a refugee than that he is a refugee. He could be a government minister or a refuse collector or a nurse or a social worker or an academic or a surgeon or a taxi driver or a labourer or a plumber or a scientist or anything. But at that point he's nothing but a refugee. There's no, no appealing detail in being a refugee. The refugee has no income. He has no job. He has no house. He might have had jewels, but he's left them behind. He might have had equipment, but he's left that behind. He might have had memorials of people that he loves, but he's left them behind. It's a dreadful thing, a horrible thing to be a refugee. There's no comfort in being a refugee. It's squalid and repulsive and vulnerable and uncertain and insecure and demanding and exhausting to be a refugee. There's no peace in being a refugee. There's anger and fear and indignation and regret and longing and weariness and anxiety in being a refugee. To be a refugee is absolutely the very, very last choice that the refugee makes. It is only because of his need, her need, that they choose to be a refugee, seeking refuge. The urgency is desperate. Now you know all that. Of course you do. I mean, anybody with a, a minimum of thinking about the subject can realise that all of that is true. Ah, but listen to this. In the history and testimony of every Christian is this fact written that he or she came to Christ as a refugee. The need to come was urgent. There was urgency that drove the Christian to become a Christian. When the Spirit of God comes upon the soul, he convicts of sin and righteousness and judgment and of all uncomfortable convictions. Those are quite the most severe. There is a hurricane a force in the man's, the woman's soul. There's a roaring gale in the soul. There's a 
almost a screaming cry for purity and for purpose and for peace and to come to Christ is the soul's last choice if this doesn't work nothing will work you know there are more as it were there are more crowded unseaworthy boats reaching Christ's shore than all the world's governments dealing with refugees have ever coped with. There are more lines of refugees stretching back through dark valleys and in dismal swamps and on dreary tracks with guns and knives and hazards besetting them with threats and catcalls and slanders and they are of one urgency in every heart they want to come to Christ because they need to come to Christ Horatius Bonner wrote a hymn and it has this line, these lines. I came to Jesus as I was, weary and warm and sad. I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad. The Saviour said, Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And there's the testimony of every Christian. We have come to Christ and more than we can say, he has met our need. May God be praised that as refugees we came to Christ and oh, as a refugee, come you.